introduce our next speaker. He's a chiropractor. Paul D. Here comes his intro video. Get yourself psychologically prepared for Bo Polney. Psychologically prepare yourself for a, a biblical, uh, 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 just an extravaganza. It's all biblically based. If what he's saying is true, it's going to get a little crazy, but we win in the end. I, I enjoy having him here because it terrifies me in an exciting way. But you got to get out your Bible. You got to take notes. You got to look it all up, okay? Nearly 3,500 years ago, a prophecy written in the book of Numbers was given to the prophet Balaam. It spoke of a star, the star of Jacob, that is to appear in a distant future. This star would herald the coming of the final kingdom, the kingdom of David. The prophecy states, I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will arise from Jacob, a scepter will emerge from Israel, and it will crush the heads of the Moab's people and strike down all the sons of Seth. 2,000 years ago, the star of Bethlehem marked the birth of our King, Jesus. Matthew describes the star of Bethlehem as a sign that the Balaam prophecy is unfolding and true. Incredibly, on September 27th, 2024, the star of Jacob that was prophesied to appear in the distant future appeared in our heavens, fulfilling the nearly 3,500 year old prophecy. This Balaam prophecy transcends time and heralds an ancient promise made by God our Father to Abraham. Jeremiah 30 speaks of a time of distress for this star, the star of Jacob. For behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, the fortunes of Zion. I am restoring the fortunes of Zion. I am restoring the fortunes that were the inheritance of my people. Jeremiah 30 continues. Ask now and see, can a man bear a child? Why do I see every man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? That day is so great, there is none like it. It is a time of distress for Jacob, yet you shall be saved out of it. It shall come to pass in that day that I will break the yoke, the bondage from off of your necks, and foreigners shall no longer make servants of you, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and David your king, whom I will raise up. And in the fall will show you whom I have chosen to pray for and guide this nation. You shall rejoice, for it is my man. It is my chosen, David, says the Lord. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and David your king, whom I will raise up. For I am with you to save you, declares the Lord. I will discipline you, and I will by no means leave you unpunished because of your great guilt and many sins. Nonetheless, all who have devoured you shall be devoured, and all your foes, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Those who plundered you shall now be plundered, and all who preyed upon you I will make your prey. I will restore you to health and heal your wounds and restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and out of you shall come songs of rejoicing on thanksgiving and you shall be my people and I will be your God. 
Behold the storm of the Lord. In the distant future, you will understand the Jeremiah 30 prophecy. Welcome to the distant future. Ladies and gentlemen, he's live. Bo Pony! He's a chiropractor. Wow. God bless everybody. We got to say thank you to Clay and General Flynn for putting this on because if it wasn't for them, there would be no spark. There would be no spark. Clay Clark has been the spark for the past season. See, what God revealed to me is very interesting. Think about this for a second. How many seasons? Everybody get your pens, papers, picture, cameras, because we're going to have some things to talk about. But how many seasons are in one year? So in God's timeline, it's the backwards. God's got four years in one season. Get it? So Trump was set aside for a season. While Trump was set aside, Clay steps in. And he keeps the spark burning. We, you, we're all the spark. See, Clay kept this going. He kept it. He kept his iron sharpening iron. That is what's been going on for the past four years. How awesome is all of this? And what we're setting up and waiting for is something of biblical proportions. Why? Because, let me say this, and I think you will all agree, if God doesn't show up, if we don't have something biblical here as we step into November, we, you all saw what they did last four years ago in November, okay? You go to bed, they shut everything off, and you wake up to a different result. My point I'm trying to make is, what's stopping them from doing it this time? Right. You see, because you guys are awake. But that's my point, right? So what does that mean if God's in their way? It means we need to have God, we need something biblical to manifest. So that's what I want to talk to you about, understanding God's times and seasons. Because if we don't get biblical, we get the same result. Get it? If we don't get biblical, we get the same result. But we do know that Kim Clement prophesied that Trump will have two terms. He also said Trump would be set aside for a season. Well, bada boom, bada bing, one season set aside. But now we need a miracle. Now we need something to happen. So that steps us into where the month we're in. We're in a potential month, not potential. I honestly believe in my heart we are going to see an October surprise. I believe we're going to see some kind of a surprise that is going to freak the world out. When God manifests, you have to understand, okay, it's not like you get a little rain, okay? When God manifests, something biblical goes down, no one's going to miss it, okay? We're talking land's going to rumble. We're talking volcanoes popping off. My good friend Janie Seguin talks about a chain. God revealed to her a chain of worldwide volcanic eruptions. So again, the pieces of how this all plays out, we all, we're all watching together, okay? But that doesn't mean we can't count. And God showed me how to count some of the things, so I want to go through this, but we need to understand we're doing something really special here right now. We're all, we are all outside tabernacling in tabernacles. Why do you think this last event is outside? Because the Hebrew nation was all outside during tabernacles. What a coincidence that the last event is outside during tabernacles. Come on. How great is our God? The cool thing is, tabernacles ends on the 23rd, leading us into what's called the eighth day. Write this day down, October 24th. What it means, I have no idea. But I'm telling you, it's an important day for God. So we just got to wait and see what happens. But something was supposed to happen during tabernacles. In tabernacles, something very important was supposed to happen. If you watch my podcast, the precious God's money, silver, was supposed to explode and break through into or during tabernacles above the number $32. It did it on Friday yesterday, everybody. During tabernacles, right on time, not one day late, not one day early. 
And we're still in Tabernacles, which takes us into this coming Wednesday, into finale of the Thursday. So again, how many people are sick of walking through the valley of darkness? How many people are sick of wandering in the wilderness? You see, we don't got to go for four, 40 years like Israel, but we have for four years. And we're about to walk into the, into the place of what? Milk and honey. What is that place it's called the promised land? Okay, so let's look at some timelines. Everybody get your calculators out because I want you to do some math. Because, see, God's in the details. See, if you study the details, you, what do you find? The truth. So, con you, uh, we the people, Declaration of Independence, what year? How, what is the lifespan? Listen closely. What is, I just got this a few days ago. What's the lifespan for the United States? There's a lifespan, you can calculate it. Pretty close, but what's the lifespan for the United States? I'll show you how to calculate it. Do the math with me. One plus one, it's so simple. This is how you know it's God. If it's simple, it's God. If you gotta think about it and like really get into the crazy math, it's man. If it's simple, it's God. Very simple, Janie had a beautiful thing. The two covenant nations, Israel and America, I am. How simple is that? Why? Because it's of God. You see, when God is in the details, it's simple. Man makes it complicated. God wants you to know how loving he is, how much he loves you, and he's going to make it so simple for you to understand so everybody gets it. That's why God, and Jesus did the parables. Why? He just wants everybody to get it. So let's do the math. One plus one is... Two plus two is? Four plus four is? 248 years. Add 248, get your calculators out, 248 to 1776. What do you get? 2024. Boom! The end of the United States Corporation. You see, the United States was founded under God. The problem was, it was bought and paid for by London, and now it's, it's the corporation. Corpses are dead. So the United States is a dead entity. It's a corporation. It's no longer a nation founded under God because they want you to believe it. But basically, you've had the speakers up here today. You've, they've educated you on it. But bottom line is, we were sold out. So now we got to step into what's called a baptism. What's a baptism? Death. Oh, boy, that's so horrible. It's the death of the United States. Yeah, we need it because why? After death, what happened to Jesus? Resurrection. There's your baptism. So the United States is about to be baptized. They will bring this, Kim Clement, they will bring this nation to its knees. They will bring this nation to its knees. So don't freak out. Whatever goes down in October into November, don't freak out because they will bring this nation to its knees and then, and then, and then you will hear the sounds of sweet victory. You see, God's got to show up because if he doesn't show up, same result in November on the 5th. Get it? So we're going to see two things when God shows up. Two things happen. Judgment and deliverance. You want an example? Let's go to the Red Sea. What happened? On that day, Israel was delivered. Pharaoh and his entire army was judged. In a single day, the tables flipped. You see, when God shows up, you don't need a week. You don't need a year. You need one day. Bo, why is it taking so long? Because we got to wait till the season to end. When the season ends, that's when God shows up. You want an example? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God didn't show up before the fire. He showed up where? In the fire. You see how it works? When, when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, it's when the angels, when God showed up in the lion's den. You see, it's at the end. 
is where the victory is because it has to go to that place because God shows up when there's no way out. You see, if there's a way out, God, man's going to take the glory. No man's going to get the glory for however this plays out. It's going to play out in such a manner that no one's going to get the glory because it's going to be so obvious that God was in the details. Like I just showed you on the math on the death of the United States and the resurrection that's about to happen here. Now, we read Joel 2.31. At 3 to 1 is to 4. So Joel, Joel 31. What does it say? In the same line, the great and terrible day of the Lord. Why is it in the same line, the great and terrible? Because it's judgment and deliverance. Get it? What side of the fence are you sitting on? You see, because if when God moves, he's going to deliver us. We're bait. We are bait, people. Like Israel was bait at the Red Sea to get Pharaoh to come out. For the past four years, all the rats have come out of hiding, haven't they? And who was the one that brought the rats out of hiding? The guy with the orange hair. You see, it's in the details. That's what's happening. It's all in the details. So we understand the math. We're heading into the promised land. And what happens in the promised land? Joel 2.28, this is what happens in the promised land. And afterwards, what does that mean? After God does his miracle, whatever is about to go down, afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will have dreams and your young men will see visions starting in... November onwards, we are stepping into times that you don't even know and under, we, I can't even comprehend, but I'm always happy. Why? Because my God's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and he never is late. He always shows up mathematically right on time. So now let's read it. You saw the video, the preface video here, the intro video, the start of Jacob. Are you kidding me? It just showed up on the 27th of September. Are you kidding me? That fulfilled prophecy, going back three and a half thousand years, people, this prophecy, Balaam stated, and a star will rise from Jacob, and when will it happen? When men say they can have children. Get it? You see, the prophet, and prophecy told us when it will start of Jacob will manifest. The, the Jacob prophecy will actually, I got a prophetic word from jo Janie actually just said that God told her the star manifest. I'm like, what star? Next thing you know, I Google the star of Jacob. Are you kidding me? And so you start studying the star of Jacob. It's in numbers. Guess what number? 24. Come on, you can't make this up. So the star of Jacob will manifest, or it's Numbers 24, it manifested in the year 2024. This is wild stuff. And what does it say? I see him, but not here and now. Because he's talking about three and a half thousand years in the future. I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel and will crush the head of Moab's people. Who are the Moab's people? If you go back and study three and a half thousand years, basically all the Arab states right now. It's all the Arab states, okay? Who's attacking Israel right now? You see, all of it is like, oh, but that's horrible stuff going on in the world. Yes. And it's all in perfect timing. Start of Jacob manifested on September 27th. Hey, we're in North Carolina. What started in North Carolina on September 27th? The floods. What does a woman do before she gives birth? What breaks? Oh, what a coincidence. Are you with me? There aren't any. How amazing is all of this? And what, how crazy that we're actually in North Carolina where the water broke. People, 
This is history, like Matthew, right? You go back and you read Matthew. He was taking records of everything. That's what Matthew was. He was a record keeper. All I do is I'm just pointing, if you don't pay attention, you miss the beautiful details of God. You get it? If you don't pay attention to what's happening right in front of you, you missed God's beauty. I'm showing you how amazing our God is and what's about to be birthed. The latter temple, the body of Christ. You see, because the first time the Bethlehem, the star of Bethlehem, Matthew, that was not the star of Jacob. If they try to confuse you, but the star of Bethlehem, Matthew even states in Matthew 2, he actually says that the Balaam prophecy and the, the star of Bethlehem confirms the truth and the validity of the Balaam prophecy and check the Balaam prophecy out. It's actually the guy that prophesied about it was actually, he was the one that the donkey spoke to. Like God uses anything and everybody. This is, this is incredible how far the prophecy goes. And then this takes us into furthermore, the Jacob's trouble. Okay, so where do you see Jacob's trouble? Where do you see the star of Jacob? It's in the distress of Jacob. Look at the title. I would say for the past many years, but four years with what's going on, I would, would you say that's a little bit of stress or maybe distress? There's, so the past four years have been what's called the distress of Jacob. And what's the next line? And the restoration of Israel and Judah, the United States. So when God intervenes, the wars come to a sudden end, Kim Clement prophecy, and the United States will be reborn, Judah. Okay, so some of the key points is, that I want to hit on, but pull up Jeremiah 30 when you get home, but it talks about the restoration of Zion. Okay, that's Kim Clement prophecy. I played it. During this time, you're going to see the cry of panic, terror, and no peace. So again, October surprise, something crazy could go down here in October, okay? you Remember, because at Israel, this is a perfect example. What happened? What did Pharaoh bring to the Red Sea? His army. But understand, when he brought his army, he brought everything he had. Get it? He brought everything he had because he was not going to lose against God. So when these present-day Pharaohs come to take us out, they're going to bring everything they got, which is what? The threat of nuclear war. So don't be surprised. But again, that which has been will be again. It's just that Pharaoh didn't have nuclear weapons at the time, but he brought everything he had. So cries of panic, terror, and no peace. That's coming. So when you continue to read through Jeremiah 30, it talks about the distress of, Dra of Jacob, the great and terrible day. And here it is, Jeremiah 30, verse 8. It says, I will break the yoke off of your necks. You know what that means? You know what yoke on your neck is? It means chains, bondage, okay? We've all been in bondage and chains by the present day pharaohs. God's about to break it off. How does he break it off? With his money, because you follow the money. You know the saying, follow the money? In the Bible, the, the, the verse to follow the money is, the love of money is a root of all evil. But when you follow the money, you find out who's causing all the evil. You see how it works? So what does God have to do? He has to explode his money, flip the financial scales like Jesus at the temple. When you flip the financial scales, what ends up happening is you take down how they built it. They built it with the money, so God's going to flip the financial scales, and it all starts on tabernacles. You get it? It all starts on tabernacles. You're seeing it manifest right now as we step, as Friday closed out. So there's many more parts. So basically, the one I love right here is number nine. It says, they shall serve the Lord their God. So there is a great revival that's coming. And David their king, who I, meaning God, will raise up. Where have we heard that in prophecy? Kim Clement was all over it. He basically stated very clearly, in the fall, what season are we in? In the fall, you will know who my David is. So this is the crazy part. So Kim Clement, see, God uses prophets to fulfill his word and reveal his secrets 
Amos to through his servants, the prophets. So what God said through Kim Clement was the understanding that we would get by him saying that. So Kim Clement's word of in the fall you'll know who my David is, is the point of him saying that was he just revealed Jeremiah 30 verse 9 uh, written two and a half thousand years ago. How incredible. So this goes back two and a half thousand years and through Kim Clement, he reveals who David is. Think about this, people. The, the, the details of this are truly, truly incredible. It further goes on and says, oh, this is a beautiful part. Number 19. And then soon as you shall, shall come, songs of thanksgiving. Wait a second. What's next month? Next month, mark my words, if this prophecy is true, and so far, it's bullet point, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. So if every part's true so far, we are going to be celebrating this Thanksgiving like you have never, ever, ever celebrated before. Why? Because what's Thanksgiving? This thing, Thanksgiving is the harvest, the great harvest, the harvest that you have been and praying for. The harvest that we've been praying for for generations to fulfill the Bob Jones prophecy that goes back 50 years. What did Bob Jones say? After the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, we step into a billion soul harvest. You're not going to get a billion soul harvest unless God shows up. We're not going to win the election unless God shows up. Now, what is our job? Moses had a job. His job was to raise the staff. What's your job? Vote. You see, you have a job. God's given you all a job. And then when you're done voting, stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord, for he will work for you, for us, for Trump today for the present-day Egyptians who you see before you. Soon you shall never ever see again. And Je Jeremiah 30, verse 24, finishes on verse 24. What a coincidence. Verse 24. In the latter days, you will understand this prophecy. I just explained the prophecy that God revealed to me through Janie additionally. God revealed this. How awesome is our God, and we won't know the prophecy until when? 24. Look at the math. The hunters are about to become the hunted. We're in October. <laughs> Kim Clement spoke about the great E. I believe that's going to relate directly to a chain of worldwide volcanic eruptions. Again, best guess, my personal understanding of what probably is going to happen. Um, we not live, these are not political times. They are biblical. It's in all the details. The Jubilee, what is a Jubilee? God's going to take down the financial system, flip the financial scales. We're seeing happening right now. And then he's going to remove the bondage because the Jubilee is all about removing bondage. Wait, well, what did Jeremiah 30 say? I'm going to remove the yoke off your necks. You see how this is all coming together? Jeremiah 30 is the second witness to the Jubilee. That's written in Leviticus. Oh, what a coincidence. The Jew Leviticus is 50 years, the Jubilee, right? When did all hell break loose on the world? You got to go back to the early 70s. Because why? All of this relates to abortion. All of it relates to abortion. Because when we start killing the creator's creation, you wonder why we're in this horrible situation. All of this started in the early 70s, 73 particularly, okay? Then the Federal Reserve, all of this. Now, 8 times 50 is 400. Mayflower landed 400 years ago. It's all in mathematical perfection. Revelation 12 sign, 7 years ago, September, 7 years later, right here, right now. The woman and the dragon, it's all coming down. It's all right in front of us. 
The key date here is October 31st. That ends the seven years to the exact day going back to Revelation 12 sign. October 31st. I want to read this. On the 31st day of October, they will say it was an unusual Halloween because God said there will be a shift in the atmosphere, a shift in the atmosphere. And God says, California, you will be the first to experience it. You want a kingdom quake? Get ready because God's going to shake, shake, shake. But listen, at the end of October, America shall come to rest. I shall bring to them a Halloween. They shall say, let's celebrate Halloween. And God says, you shall do nothing of the sort. I will bring myself to this nation and I will, you will go into November and I will bring victory upon victory upon victory upon victory. This 24th, October 24th, this Thursday ends tabernacles and starts year 2025. If there's about a moment in time that's truly historic, it's next week. So we see what happens. All I know is God never loses. He's never lost. It's all about to go down. And lastly, I want to finish with this one thing. The harvest starts in November. The timing on this event, and I want Clay to come up here. The timing on this event is truly incredible because those who have read Daniel 12, verse 7. Daniel 12, verse 7 says, It shall be for a time, one year, times two years and a half a time, three years. The first day that Clay did this event, the very first day to today is exactly to the exact day, three and a half years. This event is biblical. Clay was prophesied to do it through Kim Clement. Mr. Clark of three of the prophecy is now fulfilling this season. The season is coming to an end, but because the season's coming to an end, I want to give Clay a little gift. If there's any cameras, can you zoom in on this? It's a Glock 45. <laughs> it's five ounces of silver. It's a silver bar, five ounces of silver, a Glock 45 which I want to give to Clay. I think I'm going to be arrested for receiving this. <laughs> when I saw this, I'm like, oh, I got to get one for Clay. <laughs> what is this? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to, Aaron, I'm going to pass this to you. You can go to jail for receiving a weapon on <laughs> Except a, a just that that it's silver. Podcast. It's not a real gun. So no, no, I, just, there. Yeah, I yeah. know what you're doing. You're <laughs> setting me up. This is some sort of, the, but the paranoia is rich with me. Okay. So, and in closing, a couple last things here. Clay Clark, so when Trump was, was set aside for a season, on that day, when he was set aside for a season, remember you all got furnace, you all have water heaters? Underneath the water heaters, there's a thing called the pilot light. On the day Trump was set aside, this man turned 40 like Moses. On that day Trump was set aside, this man was a pilot light for us, for the church. For the past four years, he's been the pilot light. The season now comes to an end because the season's over at four years. And when Trump comes in to take his rightful position as on his second term, this man turns 44 on the exact day. There is no coincidences. It's all by God's perfect hand and design. We love you, Clay. I'm gonna go hide after I hit my head with that gong. Let's hear it for Bo Polding. Yes. God Bo. bless you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, lastly, I've got books over there. I'll sign if you want. And I'm giving, my wife is giving away, I'm giving you 20 bars of silver. Single, single moms, that's it. Single, single moms. moms, yes. Single moms. Head over there. We got a bar of silver for you. I got 20 bars to give away. God bless you all. I'll sign the books. Um, there's a one minute closing video. I love you guys, but Jesus loves you more. Thank you, Bo. Closing video. Shaka Baba. Thank you, Bo.
some ship or something after this. Oh, thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bo. Okay, just a quick disclaimer, and then we'll introduce our next speaker. Uh, just like Amos, I'm not a prophet, not of a son of a prophet. I'm just a very aggressive, very pale male who wants to end this dystopian Great Reset jackassery. And, and if somehow I'm part of a prophecy, that's great. And if I'm not, that's great too. But I'll tell you this, I'm aggressively going to uh, fight until the very end because that's my mindset. That's how I was calibrated.